Our paper, our paper in different system, artificial recognition system. And today I will be focusing on a specific chapter of the paper about the development and evaluation of our system. Uh, but first, let me briefly introduce the artificial recognition project, which aims at developing general purpose models of human information processing for the usage in various artificial systems, such as human robot interactions um, or application models. But current, currently, for the purpose of basic development and evaluation, we use our model as a decision unit for a humanity agent in a virtual world. There are some key features of the ARS approach I want to mention briefly. First and foremost, it is a functional model in following a generative approach which is describes functions and general behavior instead of behavior itself. Of course, it um, enables generic and flexible models. It is a layer description model. Uh, the principle here is that we use appropriate means of description for different aspects of the system. So we distinguish three aspects, neurons, neurosymbolics, and the type layer. Of course, they represent all the same system, but only different aspects. For instance, you also wouldn't um, describe PowerPoint by by the physical state of the computer systems, so every aspect of the system needs um, an appropriate mean of description. We are focusing on the psychic level in, in the ARS approach. And the ARS model is holistic and unitary. Sorry about that. It, 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 Maybe this is better? Yeah, okay. Um, where were they? Holistic and unitary. So it is a consistent and coherent integration of basic aspects such as motivation, emotion, and planning. And we develop our model using a top down approach. So we computize abstract function incrementally starting with the data data. And we think these key features only can be considered in um, um, intensive bionic and interdisciplinary approach, where we translate knowledge into technical models using the our methodology. And here the basic question is about this methodology, about how to develop and evaluate such a model. And there are some challenges with dimension T features and which was the nature of, of our research topic being the mind that we have to consider in, in developing such a methodology. And I want to mention briefly some of them. The restricted accessibility of the mind, there are various ways to get information about the mind structuring, but we have to consider if it's the, if, if it's the relevant uh, knowledge for our objective. And if it's uh, on the relevant level of, of description. So we think in most cases um, knowledge from other disciplines can be used directly. We have to integrate, integrate them and um, need experts for knowledge uh, translations. And we think this collaboration with experts is not only in a, a non-regulatory sense but really in an intensive and um, regular co cooperation is needed, but especially when, when different researchers use different vocabularies um, or methodologies, we know that understanding is not always an easy task, uh, understanding each other is not always an easy task, so we have to, to consider that as well. Another challenge in, in developing and evaluating our model is the complexity of the research topic, this is obvious on a normal uh, level, but it's also the case on the type of level, where only the interplay of various factors determine the human behavior. 
we take these challenges amongst other into account and combine three types of, of methodologies, uh, which are casuistics for interdisciplinary cooperation, uh, use case based refinement and analysis, and agent based innovation as an evaluation framework. And we turn this combination of, of methodologies case driven agent based innovation. The course procedure is uh, we first we together with sorry, together with researchers from other disciplines we find a narrative description of an exemplary case that should be generated by our model. And we are also focusing on assumptions about how this behavior is generated. Um, then we structure it into a so-called simulation case. Uh, to extract and analyze the requirements of this exemplary behavior. These requirements are fulfilled by developing a data and function model, which in turn is evaluated in simulation. And we observe if the simulation shows the expected behavior, if not, um, another iteration is in the way. In the next slide, we'll go into some details about single steps. So the first step describes the phenomenal state and assumptions about it. For example, in simple case, how to hungry agents in front of a food source behave. Do they eat the food source, share, flee, bite, etc. So what are the assumptions behind their behavior? So, such example case is a platform and a tool for interdisciplinary cooperation we have found, and it exemplifies and discusses research question with a concrete exemplary case. For example, research question about the motivation and decision making in um, such a scenario. And we have seen that such procedure enables stating and later testing concrete assumptions. For example, the role of emotions, drives, and norms, and how we interact to determine people. And we have also seen that it avoids drifting into an abstract discussion, which may be a risk with intensive interdisciplinary cooperation. So overall, this exemplary case um, embodies and integrates theories from different disciplines to explain behavior. Such an ex exemplary case is a good tool for intensive cooperation, but we have seen that since it's a narrative uh, way of description, it's often indeterministic, and there may be gaps in, 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 in its assumptions, and especially when using theories from different disciplines, um, the exemplary case may be inconsistent, so we can't use it for developing a model. We, we use it as a tool, as a starting point in interdisciplinary cooperation, but we need to analyze it and structure it in the next step to use it uh, for a computational model. So first here we clarify the exemplary case, we exemplicate assumptions, we find a consistent description, and then we structure the case into a deterministic description, meaning we find a causal function description of the different uh, assumptions, and we um, find the data determinants of the behavior. And we have seen that they, these have to be uh, in four groups, namely memories, personality parameters, environment, and internal state, which basically represents um, it's represented by emotions and drives. So for every possible behavior in the exemplary case, we have to track down which data of these four groups determine this behavior. The result is a so-called simulation case, sketched here on the right. And this step is inspired really by use case driven requirements engineering. So we have preconditioned description and post condition. The preconditions in our case are the data determinants of these four groups. 
Um, for example, in the case of in the standard scenario, the standard scenario, um, Adam and Moro are the two agents in the case. Um, and in the standard scenario, Adam eats the Schlitz, Schlitzholz famous Austrian food, so if you don't know it. Um, and for the standard scenario, we describe the precondition, the data determinants, how they lead to the post conditions, which are the chosen action, and the um, final state of the agent. And this description um, holds all requirements needed to build a functional and data model that generate this behavior. And now we, we have also consider every alternative to him. Can you expand a little bit on the personality determinant? Sorry? Can you expand a bit on the, on the personality Person determinant? Personality parameter is only, um, let's say, a simplification. Personality parameter has to be, in the end, memories, or is an abstraction of memories, but we, we, we found it hard to uh, let's say, adapt hundreds of, of memories only to, to um, represent one personality parameter such as how aggressive the agent is. So we abstract from the memories personality parameters. Yeah, there are different kinds, kinds of it. Um, okay, so for every autotive behavior we have to track down and justify how a change in this determinant would lead to a change in the behavior. And since we want to develop a functional model, for the alternate scenarios, we don't describe the, 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 how the, the, the determinants lead to alternative behavior. It should be generated um, by, by itself. So such, such simulation case enables requirements analysis, a computational, the development of a computational model, and um, of most important issue, a testament for evaluation. Okay, since I haven't much time, after implementing this model, we can evaluate it. And evaluation um, occurs by using this simulation case as a fine rate test template. So, we parameterize the simulation according to the data determinants of the respective scenarios and observe if the functions generate and the data determines the behavior is expected. But we also observe how the behavior is generated. For instance, um, how, the, how emotions and drives evolve and um, influence decision making. Is this really according to the assumptions from the example case? So evaluation not only occurs on a behavioral level, but also on a, a functional level. Um, this enables us to test the predictability of the simulation case hypothesis. Are the assumptions valid? Does the interplay of specific factors generate expected behavior? For example, emo how emotions interact with drives and norms to determine specific behavior? And does the change of specific data lead to a behavioral change. Of course, without uh, changing anything in, in the code or uh, functional model. And if we found um, an unexpected behavior or state, and of course this is the, the standard, we have to conduct an analysis on different level and um, different feedback possibilities are the case. And here on the right uh, is the, the whole procedure sketched again. And you see the feedback possibilities on the right. And basically there are three types of it. Feedback A and B indicate a mistaken model translation from other disciplines into an educational model. Um, it may make it um, necessary to adapt the model or adapt the requirements or the determinants. And possibility C may indicate contradictions or inconsistent assumptions in the underlying theory, or if using different uh, theories, contradictions be between them. So really the, the, the 
third possibility also gives feedback to other disciplines to sharpen the modeling in, in a sense. So we have seen that uh, this methodology is able to bridge disciplines and test knowledge translation. And we concretize tested assumptions from other disciplines and structure the knowledge into a causal model and fine grained test plan. And you can see this whole methodology or evaluation procedure as model calibration. For every domain within, you have to calibrate the model with the different possibilities, with different behavioral possibilities. But after this is done, after this alternative scenario is, uh, are validated, we also need to, to conduct a scientific analysis to guarantee a stable model. So here we place some more with the parameters without um, having any expectations, but only observing if the behavior is comprehensible and reasonable. And we think these uh, two points, model calibration and stimulant analysis, is a premise or a premises for model applications in specific moments. I thought that's what we want to do. We want to use a model, or everyone in ATI, a model in different domains. Um, and we think if, if uh, we would apply this model, we have to do these two steps. And as an outcome, uh, starting this outcome, we will um, uh, apply our AIOS model in two very different areas in building automation and decision support system for marketing strategies. And um, I'm very curious how, in this case, the model calibration and sensitivity analysis with the same model would be. So that's all for me, and thank you very much.